This is a workshop for Explore. It was workshop three. Um, in 29th of the 7th, 2018. I've got some notes here and then I'll elaborate and try and bring together what I experienced on that day and um, what lessons I've learnt from what was a very challenging workshop. Um, firstly, this was billed as a bonobo experience that would um, become a sexual um, sexual contact experience for the people within the workshop. All of it was consensual, everybody was very clear about what was going to be um, happening in the space. I talked about consent. This is a um, an international sexuality festival, so people are already pretty clear about what they're getting into. So, um, yes, this was an experience for me that was very challenging. Um, my initial feeling in the room was that um, there was too many males in the space and not enough females in the space and just backtracking a bit some of my main concerns about working in um, a predominantly heterosexual environment is that and I've got some experience in that because I um, I occupied the straight world for a long time and found myself realizing that that wasn't who I was and where I wanted to be but nevertheless I felt like these workshops that I explore would be really important to um, widen people's awareness of the Bonobo experience so that said when I found myself in a space that was predominantly well two-thirds men I started to find myself reflecting on my main fears about how talking about Bonobo culture is to talk about queerness, it's to talk about um, non-heterosexual behaviour. Um, so saying this in a culture that is predominantly a heterosexual culture and then to say well you know bonobos um, are sexually disorientated, they don't have any particular sort of orientation that's not something that is a concept for them um, monogamy isn't a concept for them um, the males don't know who the children belong to because the males and the females are all interacting sexually anyway and children are a byproduct of that so in essence my main fear was that to introduce a queer aspect into a sexually um, sexually positive space where sex was okay and could and does and did happen I um, recognised the fears that I had around males not really interacting with one another but moving towards the females in the group and I wonder how much of that was exacerbated by a um, maybe an internalised homophobia or maybe a f there's too much sort of um, risk to maybe be suggestive to another guy who may not be reciprocal in that sense. Um, and this is this is very easy in the gay community and it's very easy in the queer community. Um, queer being lesbian, gay, um, bisexual, transgender and queer um, and intersex people. There's um, a different dynamic at play but with this workshop I was either privileged or distressed to see this take place um, and be bear witness to something that I'd created that then was starting to unfold. So I recognised that the females were kind of had a lot of attention and in some cases I felt that maybe they were a bit overwhelmed and I was very clear 
um, speaking to the group but looking at individuals and saying if you're feeling overwhelmed move around the room don't feel like that you have to sort of like stay in a certain space and everybody feel into the energy of the that you're putting out and are you is this consensual what is happening are you in a space where you feel like um it's clean you know we this is there's a clean energy that's happening so on several occasions i felt like i had to kind of reiterate that 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 um methodology or idea um a really good thing that did happen was a woman came up to me and said what do we do if um we're getting touched by several people um and so i introduced um uh, a hand washing station antiseptic hand washing station so that people could um maintain hygiene when interacting with lots of people so that was a really important thing um in particular one woman i could tell was not really comfortable and when i spoke to her afterwards she kind of expressed that she was very um she was not used to being in a heterosexual environment because she was a queer woman so she's much more used to being sort of in sort of non-binary um much more um, fluid spaces so this kind of male and female um, environment that was fully charged with lots of males kind of approaching females was something that she found very overwhelming and she said also because she was Asian she felt like that maybe she was exotic so that she was getting a lot of attention um, and she came up with a really good strategy for getting out of that and she told me that she changed from being a bonobo into a butterfly and that enabled her to sort of like maneuver around the space and feel like she had sort of an opportunity to um, move away and gravitate to um, things that she was more interested in so that was really really good and a learning from that was that I was able to after sensing a concern approached her afterwards and said how was that for you I sensed that you know you weren't really enjoying yourself and then we set some time aside after um, so we had a good half an hour 40 minutes debrief about why that may have happened that she was overwhelmed and how she managed to um, orientate herself out of that space and what would be a better way to do it next time so yeah we talked about how to build a sisterhood within a workshop that is witnessed by the males so they know the deal and they see that these women are building a, a almost an inner tribe within a tribe that en enables them to look after each other and communicate with one another through maybe touch or sound or eye contact so that's something that we're going to take forward into an, the next workshop when we work in this sort of environment so that was really really helpful Uh, a big learning for me was I made the mistake of going off schedule. So initially I was going to do some group work that was um, welcome young females into the group. So I was going to get them into groups of 10 and then I would identify or nominate a dominant female who was the leader of the tribe and a young female who was um, getting to the age of 13 where bonobo females will then leave the tribe and look for another female within another tribe and gravitate straight to them and then they will um, have sort of intercourse or GG rubbing and then she's initiated into the tribe. So my idea was to run groups of 10 Dominant female, submissive or not submissive, but uh, younger female in each group. And then I would pair two groups of 10 with each other. So there'd be two groups of 10, two groups of 10, two groups of 10. And then within each group, the dominant female would say goodbye to the female that was leaving and it would be witnessed. And then 
the female that was leaving would go to the other tribe and obviously the female from the other tribe would go into this tribe so that they were initiating a um, a new female into the tribe so that was one way of exploring the dynamics of how the females um, navigate through bonobo culture and that was going to be something I was going to do also what I was going to do I was going to have a male aggressor within the tribe so we'd have a group of females and then we'd have a male bonobo aggress a female and then the females would in turn um, turn on the male and either go for him or get him out of the get him out of the space and make it clear to him that that's not the right behavior what i wanted to do then was to make sure that when we started to get into um, a wider experience that those male bonobos were neutralized and they weren't seen as aggressors that was something that I was working towards how I would do that none of this happened it was a shame that I really bailed out of doing this process and I found out to my cost that what I did instead was I ran the hand signals I did a few um, bonobo gestures the um, did the hand signals did the um, body language did the birth and experience um, and then it became kind of more of an open space that didn't have as many rules attached to it as the previous workshops so the previous workshops had got more structure in it and this was billed as more of a sort of play space or a sexual space so that that sort of structure was not established in the same way as this one um, and I found that I got to a point where I think I, I think I made the mistake of saying um, uh, where I got half an hour left and I felt that you know we this is an opportunity for people to start or bonobos to start interacting with one another um, and a big learning for me was when I was saying it, I realised that it wasn't something that I was comfortable saying. But at one point I said, it's mating season. And I think what that did was it... Bonobos don't have a mating season, for a start. They, children are byproduct of their behaviour that they use sex to bond. So the idea of mating would is obviously about procreation and not about sort of interacting as bonobos would do and um, saying hi to one another physically or getting angry with one another and then calming each other down so the idea of saying mating season brought it right into kind of a very human um, base um, idea from me I felt like I'd I'd reduced it to kind of like a um, kind of like a carnal um, experience and not one that was more about checking in with one another emotionally and just taking care of one another and you know and, and feeling into the space the idea of saying mating season kind of for me put a complete new slant on the energy and that made me realize that the work that I should have done which was to like integrate um, the methods in which bonobo females claim or retain their power was something that I didn't do and I regret that so that is a huge learning for me is that I need to make sure that what I'm doing is um, not being scared of taking quite complex um, ideas around um, how bonobos interact in groups um, instead of just letting it sort of go um, in any which way direction so 
yeah, that was a really big learning for me. So what I'll do now is I'll begin to develop a space where um, maybe females are running the um, Bonobo experience in in the straight spaces. So train up three or four women to go in and do that without me being there. I think that'll have a really powerful message and also the females can then the f female bonobo facilitators will be able to um, initiate this female sisterhood within the workshop where males are observing them and also the females that are facilitators can also go into the space and you know be um, safeguards to behavior and make sure that everybody is kind of playing by the rules so great learning thank you